Sorba, uh, I suppose it's been a really good start under Darren Moore so far in terms of result-wise, but I suppose uh, a few sort of creaks came out the last day in the performance against Birmingham City, I suppose, really and truly. Uh, the game was gone for me from an early sort of stage, but when you look at the amount of possession, when you look at the amount of shots, you had 17 shots uh, throughout that game, and you look at the sort of return there as well. Is that a sort of a worrying sign that she have 17 shots and on, out of that 17 shots, only six of them were on target on the day? I don't I don't see any worries, to be honest. Uh, the Birmingham game was a learning curve for everyone. The gaffer, everyone. Um, we know what where we went wrong. And to be honest, I think we have 17 shots. That's fine, at least we're having the shots. But at the same time, another day, it's just I think it was just a bad day at the office for the boys, for me personally, for everyone. Um, but at the same time, I do believe that okay, yeah, we have 17 shots, but barely scored. But there'll be a time when we have 17 shots to score. So it's one of them ways it's football. That's just what's gonna happen, really. And Sarba, you mentioned there about uh, the opponents uh, this weekend, uh, Queen's Park Rangers, and you've been in the dressing room here at Huddersfield at times where managers have been under pressure and needing to get results uh, to keep their job uh, alive. And that seems to be the case now for Gareth Ainsworth at the weekend. There's so much pressure coming in to him on this game and an awful lot of people talking that if he doesn't come away with a result this weekend, any form of result, draw, win or something, that he mightn't be in the hot seat in Queen's Park Rangers next weekend. Does that make it more dangerous a game for you when a manager is under that amount of pressure to, to get a result that he knows that he needs to perform, to his match of his ability because if he doesn't there's a highly likely chance that he won't be in the hot seat as an opponent how do you sort of mentally prepare yourself for a team like that who players might be fighting on their backs for their manager this weekend I think you look at them the same way you look at any other team uh, in this league every team is dangerous in their own way and QPR got their got their threats but they also got their areas where we can exploit as Huddersfield Town but for us, we don't really worry too much about the other team. I think the people who are going to put pressure on their own manager, you can't really call them fans, really, because they've got to be up on their team. They've got to be supporting their team through thick and thin. And for us, all we got to do, if they're down, they're down and they're hurting, for us to put our boots down on their throats and kind of go for it and kind of take advantage of it, really. And I suppose, Sarba, you mentioned there about your flexibility uh, this year and being playing in a uh, multiple uh, of uh, positions. And I suppose that has really seen a sort of a change in terms of the front line, in terms of options being available. And you've obviously been able, your flexibility has means that you can play in a number of roles across that front line. Does that make you more a valuable asset in terms of what you can give to that Huddersfield town side at the moment is your flexibility that you have the ability to play in a number of positions across the front line where maybe others mightn't uh, have that capabilities within the current Huddersfield town uh, roster at the moment, squad. Yeah, of course. Obviously, every manager's dream is to have someone that can play many, many different positions and put 100% in and have quality in, in all them positions. And for me, I like to think um, of a manager's dream I can play anywhere he wants me to play and I'll put 100% in. But for me, it's like wherever the gaffer wants to play me, I do I do the business wherever he wants me to play. I need to be effective in everywhere I play. Um, and for me, it's just kind of just helping the team. Whether that means if I one game, I have to play centre-back and I have to help the team. It has to be done because that's just me as a person. Um, and if it takes winning the game, then so be it. We keep going. And Sarba, we're so used to seeing you as a as a winger and a sort of attacking winger. But I'm sort of curious in terms of playing up top. In terms of it's it's sort of different dynamic. It's a different sort of role. And do you like to come short for the ball, or are you very much when you play it up top? Do you like to run in behind? If you're playing with a, a big striker, do you like to be the the guy that goes in behind after the knockdowns, or do you like to come to feet and play that possession game and spin off and go again? Because uh, it's different playing up top. Each striker has a different sort of role to play. And what role do you like playing when you're up top? Of course, obviously, I've got the ability to be able to come under the ball and play football with some of the boys. and But I've also got the, the speed and the 
the, the mentalness to run in behind. So it's literally whatever the gaffer wants me to do, I'm willing to do. I can do either side of the game. Um, with a big guy, I'll probably be more likely the one that'd be running behind with the pace and kind of dropping the back line. So yeah, answering your question, just literally whatever the gaffer wants me to do, I'll do it. Um, with a big man, I'm probably more likely to be the one running in behind. Yeah, and just one final question. Uh, just uh, on the Wales sort of situation at the moment, just a broad sort of view. We've seen Scotland at the Euros. Uh, we've seen uh, England uh, more or less there. But for Ireland and Wales, their sort of development at the top front of world football has sort of dropped now in the last few years in terms of uh, competing for tournaments. Is it a worrying trend that we see Scotland going upwards, maybe the ladder in the last few years, and Ireland and Wales are maybe dropping a bit to where they once were? They were normal. Uh, normally in big tournaments Ireland and Wales in the last few years but it seems to be Scotland now are the team that are, along with England are being in major tournaments and Ireland and Wales are seem to be slipping down a bit I don't think there's any worry I don't think I, don't, I can't really speak too much about the Irish camp but with the Welsh camp I can't see there being any worries um, listen we're in a we're in a transition stage right now with you know I mean world class player leaving um you know, what I mean, top youngsters from all over the all over the world really coming into form for Wales. So for us, it's just about us really focusing on us. Um, there's still a possibility of us going to the Euros, and all we gotta do is focus on us, deal with whoever's in front of us. And to be fair, we all have faith in our gaffer. Cheers, thanks, Sarba. Yes, guys, thanks again for convening a bit early. We'll be back with Darren at.